A few years back, someone during one of the streams asked a very interesting question. A question that sort of has been bugging me for a pretty long time. When it comes to gravitational waves produced by, for example, black hole collisions, can you physically surf them? In other words, can you actually do something like this, or I guess using spacecraft or some other unusual tool, in order to surf the gravitational waves produced by black holes or really pretty much anything, anything massive enough to produce these effects? And back then it took me a few weeks to figure out exactly what the answer would be, but the thing is I sort of forgot to answer it, or I guess to some extent I forgot to make the video about it, and so now, a few years later, I'm finally ready to give you that answer. The answer is sort of no. But there is a small caveat and a small explanation that's needed to actually explain what's going on here and why we don't believe you can surf these waves in any way similar to what you see right here. Although there was actually another intriguing question asked about black holes back then, and I'm going to be answering that in a separate video coming out really soon, so make sure to subscribe. Anyway, so why not, why can't you serve these waves? Well, there's no one answer, but there are several mini answers that all imply that all of this would be impossible. First, the location. Here on Earth, you can really only surf waves when the wave itself forms what we refer to as the tube. And in order for these tubes to form, they have to be in a location where two different substances or two different media start to interact. In this case, water that produces waves interacts with the ground itself, causing certain types of shallow water waves to appear, with the height of the wave increasing as the depth of the water decreases and eventually producing these tubes. So you do have to have two different substances or two different media in order to produce these effects. But when it comes to understanding the gravitational waves, from what we know so far, there is no such possible location. The waves themselves pretty much go through everything in the universe, and there's no possible location for these gravitational waves to crash against the shore. And so there's really no equivalent for the shore in the entire universe, at least according to modern theories. And so instead, everything in the universe sort of acts like a typical buoy in the middle of the ocean. Things just move around as different waves pass through them, and it's pretty much impossible for any buoy or for anything in the middle of the ocean to serve these waves. And then there's also the question of the shape of the wave itself. In this case, this is pretty much possible because the water waves do something like this. In this case, water molecules describe a kind of a circle. And so a buoy on the surface of this water is just going to move up and down, left and right, but overall have no net motion. But a typical gravitational wave would instead stretch objects toward and away from the direction of the wave itself. It's literally the space itself stretching and compressing. And in this case, as the wave approaches toward us, you kind of slowly move toward it, move away from it, and then return back to the original position, with the gravitational waves themselves passing through the entire object without any interaction with anything else. And so in the end, these gravitational waves do not produce any displacement from the center of mass. Moreover, there's also the problem of speed. When it comes to surfing the waves, water waves slow down as they approach the shore. But gravitational waves move at the speed of light, and no physical object is able to move at that speed, no matter how big or small. And so here the speed of light itself provides a very important limitation to all of this, with the other limitation coming from the idea of surfing itself, or the physics behind surfing. In order for a surfer to stay on top of the wave, and in order to even move along the wave, the gravity from planet Earth has to pull down on the surfer as the buoyancy pushes them up. And on top of this, there's also an electromagnetic interaction or electromagnetic repulsion between the physical surfaces of the fluid, in this case water, and the surfing board that moves along the water. And when it comes to gravitational waves, nothing we can think of or nothing we know of has similar effects. And there is no external force equivalent to gravity that would push the surfboard down in order to make the riding possible. And the fact that these are plane waves and not sinusoidal waves, like what we see on water, makes this even more challenging. And the last intriguing component here is the strength of the force itself. When it comes to the electromagnetic force, or the force that provides the repulsion necessary for the surfing to even occur, the force between electrons inside atoms, it's something like 10 to the power of 36 times stronger than the force of gravity. Or to give you a better illustration here, let's take a look at what actually happens when these black holes collide. During the moment of collision, a typical merger will actually release approximately 3 solar masses of energy, converting the mass itself 
into gravitational energy propagating across the universe as gravitational waves. And so that's kind of like taking three suns, turning all of this into energy at the same time, and then releasing it into the rest of the universe. And if this event were to create electromagnetic energy, it would result in the most powerful supernova we've ever seen. It would be brighter than any galaxy in the universe. The amount of energy released here would be absolutely ridiculous. And even being 100 light years away from this event would be deadly to any life. Yet gravitational waves are so weak that they barely produce any effect. You can actually be relatively close to a typical black hole merger within approximately several astronomical units. You can even be on a planet orbiting these stars and you are unlikely to feel almost anything. Okay, not entirely true. You would actually hear something. But I don't want to spoil this because this is going to be in a separate video coming out really soon. And so because the gravitational forces are so much weaker, they're just unable to produce the same effects. And because of the weakness of these forces, it once again means that surfing them would be almost impossible. And so instead, a typical gravitational wave simply just makes things contract a little bit, stretch a little bit by a tiny, tiny amount as the waves pass. Which is exactly why the scientists had to build a huge facility like LIGO with lasers that are several kilometers long in order to even see the effects. And so here they basically are able to detect tiny tiny stretches even smaller than the atom itself. And then by figuring out the distance to the original event, we're able to work out what exactly collided with what. But even if the effects were much larger and stretched the objects by a much bigger amount, it would still be practically impossible to use this for surfing in any way. Except for maybe one way. So basically there's maybe one possible exception. If we could somehow find a way to transfer some of this impulse and some of this momentum from the waves into a physical object. In other words, if we found an appropriate type of a surfboard. A surfboard that can somehow use these types of waves to contract in just the right way to then apply momentum into one direction. So for example, if we have some kind of a surfboard with just the right shape and just the right material, that somehow starts to oscillate from these events in a way that generates momentum. Or maybe generates secondary gravitational waves which can then cause it to move in one way. And this is actually a somewhat interesting mathematical problem that currently has no solution. But is also not very practical either. Simply because you would have to be extremely close to a black hole collision for any of this to take effect and to even give you a little bit of propulsion. Because most objects would still basically just act like buoys moving back and forth and just oscillating without moving anywhere. But if this object starts to oscillate and create its own gravitational waves, which then create all sorts of interference, in theory it's possible to make it move just a little bit. It's unlikely to be practical or unlikely to lead to this, but would possibly provide just a little bit of propulsion away from the black hole collision. With I guess a more intriguing question being in regards to the wave interference in general. At least in theory, Gravitational waves can also interfere with one another to produce much larger waves than usual. But the thing is, we still don't really know much about them, and we still are not able to measure larger waves in order to actually find answers to any of these questions. Although, since in 2023 a lot of observations are going to be resumed, including a new facility in Japan, there might be more answers coming in the next few years. But we'll talk more about these discoveries and some of the other discoveries in regards to gravitational waves in some of the future videos. For now, well, hopefully this answers your question. Surfing in gravitational waves, for many different reasons, should be pretty much impossible. But it might be possible to get a little bit of a boost and a little bit of a momentum using specific materials and using specific shapes. But more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.